In a previous lesson, we looked at some combustion reactions, some chemical equations where chemical energy has been given off in a reaction between some kind of fuel and oxygen. And there were calculations that we used to find the amount of energy given away by a certain amount or a certain number of moles of the fuel. I assigned a couple of homework problems, and this lesson is showing how those homework problems are to be solved. Okay, let's look at um, this problem that you're, all, you're assigned for homework. Okay, if 22.35 moles of methane is burned, how much energy we produce? Now, let's see. I need that um, reference sheet I gave you guys. So here's the reference sheet you're using. Methane is CH4, so that's an easy way to write that. You could write out the word methane if you wanted to, but CH4 is easier to write. And even if you didn't know that was methane by looking at it, you should know. You're supposed to know with the formula for oxygen and the formula for carbon dioxide and the formula for water. So by process of elimination, this is the only thing that could be methane. Okay? So um, if we have 22.35 moles of methane, so 22.35 moles of CH4. And we're going to put that over 1 because that's our standalone amount. amount. There's nothing else that goes along with that. The sentence doesn't say, the question doesn't say, the prompt doesn't say that this amount is equal to something. It says we're starting with this amount and we're trying to find some, uh, something else about it, how much energy is produced. So that's the standalone amount, okay? What we need then is something that will allow us to convert to the energy produced, okay? And we have everything we need right here. It says that uh, here, the energy change for the reaction in the system. Now, this, what's in this column is what's happening in the system. When we say produce, that's what's happening in the surroundings. So all we're going to do is change the sign here, okay? So in the system, we are losing 890 uh, kilojoules of energy per mole of methane. And for the system, for the surroundings, then we're going to get out 890 kilojoules per mole. Okay? So if it's produced, that's in the surroundings. So we're going to have 890 kilojoules per mole. Move that down just a little bit. Per mole of what? That's one mole on the bottom of the stuff we're burning here, methane, CH4. Okay? So it just says kilojoules per mole here, but your methane is down here. You need to know which stuff, moles of what, and that's in these problems listed here. Okay? And so all we're going to do now is to cancel what we can cancel. And we can cancel moles. We can cancel methane. And we're left with kilojoules. And what does kilojoules measure? Kilojoules measures energy. And the question is, how much energy? Okay? So we just got to do the math now. I don't have my calculator up and going on my computer yet. So let's pull out a calculator in here. Do it the old-fashioned way. I mean, I guess the old-fashioned way is on your fingers, but we're not going to do that today. 22.35 times, because both these are on the top, times 890. And I get 19.891.5. Units we have out left are kilojoules, and we need to figure out how many significant digits we want in the end. Okay? Now, I guess I really ought to make this. Oh, there's my calculator. I've already done the math. Okay, let's move back, that back out of the way. Where is my mouse? Where is my mouse? There we go. All right, um, you could say that's two significant digits, okay? Because remember, trailing zeros are not significant unless they're a decimal place. Everybody remember that? So let's say that's two significant digits. I'll count it as three today, but guys, you've got to know about these significant digits, okay? It will be counted against you on the test. It really should be two. That's what I'm going to give you today. That's what we're going to go with today. If we have only two significant digits, then only this digit and this digit are significant. Underline everything else. Draw an arrow, and you have to draw the arrow because that's our operator that shows a rounding off. Okay, operators are important. This time sign is required. This equal sign is required. This arrow is required. You have to show me what you're doing, and unless you show me the operators, I don't know. Okay, well, I'm going to pretend I don't know because if you're not showing me, then you're not doing what scientists do, and that is be 
clear about what you're doing. Say what you mean. Okay? So it's 1.9, and how many places do we move our decimal? Four. Okay? So we're going to move it from here, one place, two places, three places, four places. I usually put a little, you know, jumpy arrow in there, sort of wavy or arrow or something in there, but I'm not going to do it today because you don't, it's not required. Okay? So it's times 10. Since we're moving the decimal place to the left, it's times 10 to the fourth. If we're moving it to the right, that'd be a negative 4. But today we're moving it to the left, that's a positive 4 kilojoules. There's our final answer. And I appreciate it when you put it in a box or a rectangle so I know what your final answer is. Okay, let's count off the points we're going to earn for this question then. Okay? Each of these things I wrote down here in black, they're important. The number, the units, the species. Canceling out, important. Two more points, that's five points. We're going to put the whole thing over 1, 6, operators are 7, that operator is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, canceling 13, 14, 15 for the equal sign, 16 for the unrounded answer, 17 for the units of measurement, underlining is 18, arrows 19, final answer in the correct scientific notation is 20 and 21. Okay, now we're going to add all these points up in a minute for this one right here. This is just 21 points for that problem. Does that make sense? All those things are important. Now, I'm picky about that because later in the semester, we're going to do much more complex problems. And if you get all this little, little bitty stuff done now and you get it all straightened out and doing it right, well, the other stuff come, just comes right along. Okay? And it's not so hard. So let's take a look at our next question. If the same amount, same number of moles of butane now is burned, how much energy is lost in the system? Well, that's not what's produced. Produced is what's in the surroundings. This is in the system. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Are you not grading somebody's paper? Okay. All right. So that was uh, question number one here. Then question number two then, we're going to start with 22.35 moles of butane. We're going to look down here on our sheet chart and find butane, and that's C4H10. And everything goes over one because that's our standalone amount, our starting amount. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to look for the amount of energy change in the system because delta H is always what's happening in the system. So this time we're going to have a negative number. Okay. Oop. So that's a negative 2874. kilojoules per mole, okay, per mole, that's, if I say per mole, that means one mole, okay, it's just like X's and Y's in algebra, if you have just one of them, you don't put the number one in front of it usually, you just write that X or that Y or that Z, and then per mole of what, in this case, the per mole has to do with butane, so we're going to write that formula, C4H10, and we're just going to plug it in the calculator and get the answer here. Okay. So now I've got the uh, screen version of the calculator on here. 22.35 times a negative. I'm going to put it in parentheses. Whoop, that won't do. Let's go over here and do it this way. Put it in parentheses. A negative 2874. Okay. Now you may not need on your calculator to actually put it in parentheses when you have a negative number you're multiplying by. Some calculators you might. Doesn't hurt to keep in parentheses to be absolutely sure. That way you're keeping your op order of operations separate and your calculator doesn't get confused. Okay? And make sure that when you, and you know what? I think I pressed the wrong button. That's a negative and I need to change a sign. Make sure you're using the right button. If you have a negative, uh, if you put this, if you press the subtraction button that I'm pointing to here with the mouse pointer, that's going to subtract that number. What I need is a negative number. I need this one put, pushed right here. That makes sense? I'm glad I caught it. Okay. And there's the answer we're looking for. you got to be smarter than your calculator. you got to speak your calculator's language. you got to learn what your calculator can and cannot do. I hope you can. That'd be great. Last time I checked, the calculators don't actually have a mind to be read. Yeah. They have a hard drive. Okay. Yeah. There we go.
cancel out moles, cancel out butane. The question was, can I read its mind? And of course, I'm just joking around here a little bit. All right. And so we got how many significant digits do we want in our final answer here? Four. Uh, this one has four digits. This one has four digits. And you're looking at the measured numbers and calculated numbers and using those to figure out how many significant digits you need in your final answer. We don't worry about these uh, counting numbers, okay? Uh, we don't worry about um, yeah, counting numbers, or you might call this a placekeeper, okay? Um, and so one, two, three, four, that's our significant digits. Underline the insignificant digits. Draw the arrow to show we're rounding off. And we get a and then we gotta move our decimal place. One, two, three, four places. Negative six point four two three times ten to the fourth power kilojoule. Alright. Now <clears throat> In this case, we've got a negative number right here, and a negative number here, and a negative number here. So we've got all the same points as the previous problem, but if you have three more points, we're having these negatives in the right place. So instead of being worth 21 points, this one's worth 24. Do I need to go through and count them for you, or do you understand what I'm saying? Everybody good? 24? Yeah. Oh, because this zero here, the question is, why did I say this number had to have only two significant digits? Well, this number here looks like three digits, but trailing zeros are not significant when there's no decimal point. Trailing zeros become significant in the presence of a decimal point. Okay? All right. The formal language is a little bit different than that, but, I mean, if you know that, you can... I mean, it's just kind of a common, more common way of saying the same thing, okay? Leading zeros are never significant. Trailing zeros are if there's a decimal place. Zeros between two significant digits are significant. Okay? All right. Um, let's see. So I said 24 points added all up. We get 45 points total for everything. Yes?